What is up, Life Fighters? Welcome back to the channel, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I want to start by saying thank you guys so much for the recent support and all the subscriptions to my recent video. That is awesome. I appreciate it so much. Um, normally, this page is talking about light infantry stuff and light fighter stuff, but uh, today I want to talk about something that's a little bit more for everyone. Um, everyone who's a homeowner or lives in a home. Um, <clears throat> now, me, I have a couple acres out here on my old homestead, and I am a red-blooded American, and I believe that all Americans have not only the right, but the responsibility to defend their home. And uh, one of the boys, Carl Klausch, once said that the defensive form of war is inherently stronger than the offensive. But this is only true if you've got a plan. Hang out with me today, and we'll find out if your plan for home defense is realistic or ret there's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware I think it's time to stop children What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Now, amateurs talk hardware and professionals talk software. Having a realistic home defense plan starts with doing a situation analysis um, now, I'm not going to tell you how to do this. Uh, you got to figure it out for yourself. There's plenty of good military acronyms that can help you along the way, like METTC and ACOCA. They won't get you the whole way there, guys. I want you to consider realistic and most probable threats or enemy threats to your location, okay? 12 armed men in your front yard is probably not a realistic threat unless you're out there cooking meth or selling force reset triggers. Now, once you've developed your plan, put it into action actually takes a little bit of discipline. I'm sorry. Um, that's just the fact of the matter, guys. It's going to include things like personal training, perimeter checks, equipment checks, making sure all your, all your stuff works, having the knowledge uh, to put this stuff to use and, and keep your, yourself and your family safe. Um, so you may notice that I brought you out here to my front gate. Um, this is another important thing. I encourage you to all get some land if you can, but if you can't, I understand the man's trying to make it harder to buy. Um, get it while it's still available. But um, this closed front gate is very important in my home defense plan because this closed front and latched gate defines my curtilage. I'm no lawyer, surprise there, but uh, curtilage is defined as the a uh, private area around your house. And this is important because curtilage is actually protected by the Fourth Amendment under illegal searches and seizures. And in some states, again, I'm no lawyer, defines where you can begin defending your property. Um, again, no lawyer. But for your land or your front yard to be considered curtilage, you have to make a reasonable attempt to make it private from the public, okay? So for me, this is not just a, a gate, but a closed and latched gate um, that is arguably enough effort to make this private. And what that does, that stops delivery drivers from coming up my driveway and delivering packages to my front door when I'd much rather them just uh, drop the packages here like I've asked. So guys, curtilage, look it up. It's important and understand it. Use it to your advantage. So obviously I'm a proponent for owning firearms for self-defense, if you cannot tell. Um, but I have a couple acres and I'm not always right next to the perfect firearm. Um, that I want. Um, the firearm you have is better than the one you want though, and for that reason, you see me wearing these comfy dumpy little leather holster daddios. Um, I love this thing, I got it made for this sweet, don't flag anybody, Glock 34, which I carry most of the time around the house. Now I don't carry like this in public because that would make me a huge FUD and a, a big liability. But uh, I do like the, uh, the old Gucci Glock, so that's how you know I'm not a real FUD. And uh, I got it made for the old leather holster. And we keep it in here when uh, we're around the house and not always right next to a choice firearm. Now, what is my choice firearm for home defense? No, it is not on the wall behind me. It is right here in front of me, guys. It is the shotgun. Of course, it is a shotgun. These things are fantastic. I like these for a couple of reasons. Um, one, they are a legitimately a uh, ton of firepower um, that you can keep like all on the gun. When I shoot this uh, whole magazine uh, of ammo, um, we're gonna have upwards of like 
50, 60 pellets in a target at 50 meters. As you can see, perfect A zone shooting. Um, and again, um, with multiple loads, I can really reach from either end of my property, about 100, 150 meters down to the front or 100, 150 meters down to the back. Um, and I always keep, you know, any defensive firearm set up with a little white light. And I know you guys, maybe shields don't use pressure pads. Well, yeah, I fucking do because I like having my light just on a little pressure pad, okay? Um, everybody gets their own vote. I got a pressure pad. And yeah, sometimes it goes off on mistake. So don't go snooping around in the night and think you're gonna be a little ninja um, with your pressure pads, probably not a good idea. Other than that, guys, I really like these little Velcro on side saddle doos That's their uh, actual name. That way you can uh, reload your gun from your saddle and then you can reload your gun with a brand new side saddle and you can get back into the fight pretty quick. Now this tube I believe is like six plus one, maybe seven plus one, I don't count very well. Um, but if I'm shooting nine pellet double lot buck and I've got about 12, 15 rounds of it right here, again, this is an ass load of firepower that can come out of this thing pretty quick. Um, and again, considering my most probable threats are like varmint critters and uh, pest animals, I can quickly rack out the buckshot, throw in a bird load, and go dispatch whatever poor little critter needs uh, dispatching. So that is why I encourage you to buy the shotgun and use the shotgun for home defense. Um, the only downside is it, of course, won't activate the pink flamingos that are in the front yard. Sorry, boys need a high speed round for that. So, you know, I'm a gear nerd and uh, your next question is going to be, of course, like, oh, what, uh, what gear are you using to support your shotgun, man? You got the Cry JPC with the three mags across the front. You told me not to wear it. You got the Haley strategic chest rig or the JJ's. No, no, I, I told you to got to be realistic, guys. The fastest thing to don and doff in the world is a shoulder bag. Or we can just call it a purse. Let's be honest, guys. This purse is my home defense purse, or kind of my emergency purse. It does not have a lot of stuff in here. We'll go through it real quick just so I can show you guys. Now, any purse will do. Um, this is an old Maxpedition bag. But in the front, I don't have much. I've got a big flashlight, a tourniquet, a pistol reload that fits in any of my pistols. It's a 17 length, so it'll fit my 34s, my 17s, or my 19s. Um, and then a Sharpie in there. Really don't need to get to that ever, but it's always have one. Nothing in that pouch. As I go into here, I've got a giant taped up first aid with a little flag on it so I can get to my, this is a big plussed up IFAC for a big bleed. Um, do have that big bleed kit. And we got a couple shotgun reloads on Velcro in here. At the very bottom, I've got a couple bird loads, just loose. And then lastly, just some road flares. Not lastly, I've got one more pouch to go through but uh, some road flares, guys. Uh, why road flares in this? Well, um, really good for making fucking fires if you wanna make a fire, one. Um, not that I'm making a lot of fires, but you never know. But also really good for signaling for help, all right? Uh, if you need, if there's something going on and you need to signal help and you've got emergency services coming, they last 30 minutes, throw it in your driveway and you can tell the dispatch that, hey, I'm out in the country, so it's hard to, hard to know addresses out here. Tell the dispatchers that, hey, uh, there'll be a road flare burning in my driveway. That's the house to come on in and come on up. You're safe. It's all good. In the very back here, guys, not much else. Just a big contractor bag, heavy duty, and then some EMS gloves. Um, the only things I've ever had to shoot are pest animals. And then when you shoot them, you got to pick them up, boys. So uh, uh, that's what kind of you need to have there. Um, so guys, yeah, no fucking chest rig, no plate carrier, no stupid shit like that. No one's throwing that shit on when bad guys are showing up. There's not enough time. Just a little bit of ammo, a little bit of meds for actual realistic emergencies. All right, now I would be amiss if I didn't mention how beneficial technology is when uh, you're considering your home defensive roles. Um, things like ring uh, doorbell cameras and security cameras or even like interior cameras are prolific nowadays, Wi-Fi cameras. Um, they're very simple, very easy to set up and they're pretty affordable, but you don't have to get that broad spectrum when you want to improve your home security just a little bit. Um, things like just taking uh, an old broken light fixture on the outside of your house and putting a, a working light uh, in there. That's, that's uh, something you can do. You can take uh, old dim exterior lights and replace them with uh, very bright LED floodlights. It's something I've done just in the garage for some more lighting and around the barn so there's more lighting. 
Um, as well as if you've got any blind spots on your property, um, you can, uh, for, for just a couple bucks, you can take one of these little simple Menards motion detector lights. I think this thing cost me 20 bucks. I bought a couple of them at the time. This isn't a spare. Um, and you've got a motion detector. And if you're not a complete dullard, um, it's just a little two wire, three wire. I don't know, I'm a dullard. Two wire system, and you can wire it up yourself. My father-in-law helps. Thanks, Rick. Uh, other things, guys, if you guys have a little bit more land or you guys got a long driveway like me, um, there's these fantastic products by, this is, uh, this is one by Dakota Alert. Um, this is just a driveway alarm sensor. Now, this one's a little bit more beefy than the really cheap ones you can get, but it's pretty cheap. Now, uh, this one broadcasts to a sensor right here and it picks it up. Now, this is a VHF signal that they emit. So, uh, for you radio nerds, you guys know exactly what that means. Um, you can also get some that emit on a, no, I'm sorry, maybe these are UHF. I think these are UHF. You can also get some that do VHF and MERS, um, that will hit repeater boxes and can go very far. So you can get some driveway alarm sensors that broadcast with extreme range if you start looking into the capabilities of those systems. And if you're a radio nerd, um, I misspoke. These are UHF, uh, broadcasting. So, um, the UHF signals picked up on this little thing, which buzzes or rings with, if I want it to, or, uh, if I'm super Gucci, I can just have the signal tone out one of my uh, personal radios. So, um, that's always an option guys. Um, again, improving your, uh, technology around your house, uh, in home defense sector does not have to cost a lot guys. Think, uh, think, uh, cheap stuff first. All right, guys, lastly, I don't even know if I can encourage it, but I personally encourage you guys to go get some dogs. Um, they're a light of my life and I love my dogs so much, but on a home defense uh, role, they are super fucking annoying. They bark at everything. Um, middle of the night, they hear a bump in the night, they will bark and wake us up out of bed. Um, every time the mailman comes, they bark. Every time uh, the mailman comes to the neighbor's house, they bark. Every time the neighbors show up, they bark. Um, but every time they bark, I, I of course look outside. So yeah, it can be annoying, but, uh, they are a little, uh, they can be a blessing and a curse at some times. And I want to introduce, oh, this is loud. And I'll introduce you real quickly to my dogs. This is Brewer right here. He is our healer and Bailey is probably eating grass over there. We'll show her in a second here. Um, and then Bison, he is my most precious and our youngest boy. He is a, a little cattle dog mix and, uh, he is right here. So duders, that is what I've got for you today. I hope you liked it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate all the feedback you guys have for us. I hope you guys had fun today. None of this is uh, to be taken too seriously, all right? Um, thank you so much for watching. Your likes and subscriptions, all your feedback means a lot to us, guys. Check in next time. Thanks for tuning in to Life Fighters Anonymous. Is it curtilage or turtleage? Curtle with a C. Curtle. Oh, okay. Curtilage.